everybody. This is going to be a continuation of my wolf and sheep's clothing video. This is going to be part two. So if you have not already watched part one, I would suggest that you do that first and then meet me back here after you are done. And so just to have that continuity, um, I would not advise you start here. Um, but in the first video, we talked a little bit about, you know, what a wolf in sheep's clothing or a snake in the grass is as opposed to a snake in the road and some examples of both snakes in the road and snakes in the grass or wolves in sheep's clothing and kind of my own personal experiences a little bit and just some ways in which um, you can kind of identify these people. And so this video is going to be more of ways to avoid these types of people and how to navigate around them and not kind of get caught in their trap, but at the same time still kind of identifying those behaviors in ways to kind of navigate around them and avoid them. So I'm going to go ahead and just get into it. And again, if you have not watched part one, please watch that first. All right. So like I stated in the first video, the first step to kind of fixing and addressing a problem is identifying it. And you know, you will fall for a wolf in sheep's clothing or a snake in the roads trap every single time until you learn how to identify them. And it's tricky because there is like a plethora of different behaviors and characteristics that these people can take on. You know, it's not always gonna be a two plus two equals four. Like, you know, this person's gonna do this and this person's gonna do that and they're gonna move to the left so that you can move to the right. Like, it's not always gonna be this perfect tango. And so I think it's important to keep in mind that people are people and people are unpredictable and people are complex and people can look, like a toxic person can look anything from you know, this overtly toxic person or a very covertly toxic person and somewhere in between, like I stated earlier in the last video, people, you know, bad behaviors exist in spectrums, good behaviors exist in spectrums, good people exist in spectrums, bad people exist in spectrums and binaries can be dangerous and it can kind of, you have to be able to understand that most things exist in a spectrum, not everything, but a lot of things do, um, a lot of things do that we don't acknowledge do and you know, it's important that um, we acknowledge when there is, you know, a spectrum of how, because we'll get so caught up in like, you know, this is a good person, this is a bad person. In reality, if a person's bad for us, that's something I didn't talk about. If somebody, you know, sometimes it's not even that people are bad people, they are just bad for us and they are not compatible with us. And so it's good to know what you like in a person and what kind of makes you feel like you can breathe and are comfortable in a friendship or in a relationship. Um, there is a poet by the name of Nihira Wajid and she's an amazing poet. And one of her poems, I almost remember it for verbatim, but I'm gonna butcher it a little bit here, but it essentially says, when you are with a person, how is your spirit? Can it breathe? Can it, is it breathing? Is there room for it to grow? Is it, there room for it to stretch? Is, it, is there room for it to breathe? And if the answer is no, well then you need to run. Because in every friendship or relationship you have, you should be able to breathe and exist and feel as though you can kind of dwell in the friendship without there being harsh judgment and, you know, criticism. And, you know, you feel you can be as you would by yourself. And so I think it's really important for us to be able to gauge, like, you know, sometimes we want to be able to define, oh, this person is a bad person or this person is a good person, but we'll drive ourselves crazy if we do that. Because especially with wolves in sheep's clothing, they'll come off as nice when you first meet them and they'll get really sneaky and rude very gradually, but then they'll go back to being nice and they'll be really rude to you and they'll be nice. Like there is no consistency that you will be able to find. You know, it's kind of like you hear the stories of like these people who will date somebody and the person was really nice when they first started dating and then they turn like really crappy and maybe even abusive. But then once the other person who's being abused or who's being mistreated, when they start to walk away from that person, that um, abusive person is like, oh my god, and like starts being all nice again and starts being friendly, like, I'll change, I'll do this. Like, it's kind of like this, it's this dance that is like, you know, people have different faces and can take on a plethora of different, like, a mass just to convince you that they are not the evil person who you think they are. And so, you know, you will get, you will drive yourself crazy trying to figure out, is this person a bad person or a good person? They were mean to me this day, but they were nice to me this day. They were mean to me Monday, but sweet to me Tuesday. Like, 
Don't even think about it. If a person's bad for you, they're bad for you. And sometimes it's just that people are different than us. You know, I am somebody who I spend a lot of time alone. And so when I meet people who want to hang out every weekend, who are really clingy or want me to text them all the time or, you know, want to talk all the time or people who just like are always wanting to be around me, that freaks me out and it drains me. And I tend to want to be like, wow, they're a really crappy person who don't, who doesn't have good social boundaries. But in reality, it's like, no, not necessarily. Sometimes that is the case, but sometimes it's just that they're just not my type of person. And it's not that they're a bad person. They're just not my person and I can navigate them accordingly. And it's not that I need to be, you know, judgmental of them, but it's just me being able to discern that, hey, maybe me and you are not two peas in a pod. Maybe we're just different people and we have different social needs and you can do your thing and I can do my thing and we're just not compatible. But neither of us are a bad person just because we're different than one another. You know what I mean? And so there's that and I wanted to make sure I distinguish that. But yeah, you need to be able, the first step of trying to avoid wolves in sheep's clothing is identifying that they are such. And how do you do that? You have to be observant. That's the first thing. If you can do anything today, please write that down. You have to learn, and this is gonna take time. It took me months to learn how to do this, but don't get discouraged. You know, observing is a key part of meditation, of healing, of everything. And meditation's a part of healing, but what I'm saying is um, being able to stop what you're doing and kind of omnipotently kind of as like this higher power and as this all-knowing all-present power see yourself kind of the way god would see you um and just kind of observing your own behavior and observing not only your own behavior but the behavior of others kind of looking down on yourself like you're watching a movie and kind of like you would in a dream where it's like you're like seeing yourself kind of just exist and you have to be able to observe not only yourself but others and when you're interacting with people you have to watch them there are some early warning signs that people like this are precisely like this and if you're not observant you will not catch them and you know it's really easy to kind of get swept up in life but we have to be able to ground ourselves and really pay attention and being observant is one of the first steps you can take and in that same vein also listening to your intuition um i think a lot of times people have been taught we've been stigmatizing people's spirituality and their ability to tune into themselves and listen to themselves and not everybody's spiritual and i get that and so if you're not spiritual just listen to your if you believe in like gut feelings or like your body and your subconscious mind is picking up smaller social cues that you are then interpreting and then you kind of get a feeling it's this similar thing and so you know being observant and listening to your intuition are two ways that you can um navigate toxic and wolf and sheep's clothing people and so to get more into depth of that um paying attention to how you feel so if you're talking to somebody and you're meeting them for the first time and you're getting an uneasy feeling and you're just getting like a weird vibe and i don't i don't like the word vibe because i think people misuse it but i'm gonna i'm gonna use it um just so that i can be more clear and easy to understand so if you're getting a weird feeling or a weird vibe um whenever i say the word vibe i think of like that vine of the guy who's like a saudi or like some like skater dude <laughs> who like buys incense and thinks he's better than you <laughs> i'm sorry um <laughs> so anyways um you know listening to yourself and if you get a weird vibe from somebody and you get a weird vibration like if you're feeling uneasy if you feel like uh, something's not right with that one if you get any amount of feeling because for me i'm a very intuitive person and so when i meet people sometimes i don't feel anything sometimes i feel good feelings sometimes i feel what i like to call the like complacent feeling where i feel like the person is somebody who like is like an enabler and then i also get like really bad feelings about people or i feel like they're clingy or i feel like they're like you know they have an eerie vibe and i've i've existed with and around people who have given me a wide variety of these feelings ranging from good to horrible and one thing i can say with absolute confidence is that anytime I have gotten a distinctly bad feeling or complacent enabler feeling from somebody, I have always been right. And I think one thing that, you know, 
society teaches us to do, especially in Western society, is to ignore our intuition. We're taught that it's woo-woo, we're taught that it's crazy, and that if it's not something that we can specifically point to scientifically, then it's wrong. And I, I am not anti-science. <laughs> I love science. But what I'm saying is we do need to make sure that we are listening to ourselves. And oftentimes there is absolutely a science to intuition. If you get a feeling, and it's hard because for me, I know I had to teach myself to listen to myself. I had been taught that my internal voice was wrong, it was flawed, and I taught myself to stigmatize it. Um, and so I had to really stop and take the time to teach myself how to hear my voice again and how to connect with myself again. And once I did, I was able to get those gut feelings. And it's not just listening to yourself, it's believing yourself. Um, when I got those gut feelings, bef like I would always get them throughout my life, even when I was ignoring myself and I really didn't know myself that well, I would always get gut feelings, but I'd always ignore them because I had been gaslit a lot. And I explained what gaslighting was in my last video, but I'll give a briefer. It's when somebody distorts your perceptions with um, a lie or, you know, if somebody's like, you're too sensitive or you're crazier if they like stole something from you right in front of you and you're like hey why'd you steal that and they're like i didn't you're crazy shut up carol <laughs> I, my name's not carol but i'm just using that name for an example but um you know for me i had been taught not to listen to myself i was taught that i was crazy and that i couldn't you know i, I had convinced myself that something was wrong with me and so when i'd get these gut feelings i would not listen to myself in reality that really like screwed me up because when I'd see all these weird things happening or my body was telling me, hey girl, you better run, um, my head was like, N no, no, it's fine. I mean, there's nothing that they're like physically doing or like they're, I'm not seeing any bad behaviors happening right in front of me, so it would be rude of me to walk away. Which another thing, there's a difference between judging and discerning. I know sometimes the stuff that I'm saying can seem kind of judgmental as it applies to this specific topic of, you know, when you feel like somebody's off run, like, or if you, you know, it, it sounds judgy, but there's a difference between judging and discerning. And discernment is necessary in order to keep ourselves safe and protected. And judgment is typically negative and has bad intentions behind it. It is more to tear other people down and to put ourselves above others, as opposed to discernment is kind of just making observations and deciding, hey, that makes me uncomfortable. Maybe I should dip out. And it's, a feeling is enough. And I do definitely, I'm going to say, check your biases. Because I know certain people who, like Barbecue Becky, who I talked about in the first video where it's like, she had been literally taught to be a racist and she was literally targeting people because they were black. And so it, it's not that her intuition was telling her they were bad people. It was her being a bigot. So please check your biases and don't be like, well, I felt that this person was this and it was like, um, they just spoke a different language than me and I got offended. So they're a bad person. Go intuition. Hell yeah. Like, no, it's not the same thing. You being a terrible person is not the same as like your intuition. So check your biases and hold your yourself accountable and then understand that like you know you need to listen to yourself and so if you're sensing that somebody is you know if you just get a weird feeling from them run and again check your biases but you know when I say run I just mean like maybe don't engage with them or don't pursue a friendship of any sort also stay on the lookout for little behaviors and red flags that could tip you off um things you need to look out for in order to navigate these wolves in sheep's clothing in like the first few interactions if they speak over you or interrupt you if they make passive aggressive comments at other people if you notice that they stare at you for long long periods of time um in a way that's not like like, cause I know I've had people like stare at me because they have a crush on me or I might catch myself staring at somebody who I like, but like, not like that. They're staring at you in like a weird way. Um, if they're rude to working class people and waitresses and people who are customer service, if you notice them, like if you approach them and they're like, oh my God, I like your shoes, but I think I'd like that better with like a blue top. That might be a red flag or a giveaway. Um, if you hear them criticizing other people and talking about other people behind their backs and if you hear them over fixating on other people's lives that's a good indicator if when you first meet them all they want to do is like talk to you and text you and they they're kind of what dana morningstar calls love bombing you know they're really definitely like clingy they're constantly trying to 
be around you they're constantly trying to you know it's like they don't have a sense of social boundaries and, it, and I, like I said earlier that could just be that they're different than you but if you're somebody who's more introverted like I am or maybe you're just somebody who needs more space that's definitely like a red flag for you um and also there are people who are just clingy and that is a bad thing and then there are people who aren't really clingy they just need more social interactions than others because they're more extroverted but either way if you're somebody who's more quiet if you're somebody who needs space clingy people are not a good thing so look out for that if all they do is talk about themselves and they don't really seem to be able to talk about um you know you or like in any given friendship or relationship there should be room for all types of conversation so you can talk about each other you can talk about your day, you can talk about movies, you can talk about um, plants, you can talk about lamps, you can talk about, I don't know, just anything. And if you find that you are only having conversations about them, that's a good indicator. And also, like I said earlier, can your spirit breathe easily? Like when you're around them, like, like I already said, listen to yourself, but do you feel like you can kind of navigate in the relationship? Or if you say no to them, will they get mad? And if the answer is yes, then run. But yeah, those are some good indicators of whether or not a person is a wolf in sheep's clothing. And like I said, becoming observant will help you pick up those things easier. And it'll be easier to discern as opposed to a lot of times these people catch you off guard and kind of drag you into the bushes. So I think it's important that you kind of watch yourself and watch them. And I don't mean watch like judgy watch how they would probably watch i mean like just observe be very observant observe how they treat other people observe how they treat people who are like you o observe just observe another thing i'd advise you to do for your own safety and i know um this can be kind of hard is you kind of need to develop some type of poker face and i've had issues with this in the past because i'm somebody who i'm very just i'm very friendly when people describe me to other people they're like yeah she's she's real friendly and so I'm very friendly and I have a bad habit of just kind of like being friendly to everybody and then realizing that when I do that all these terrible people start coming my way because they think they can take advantage of me and then I just have a lot of problems and people are trying to take advantage of me and I'm like get away get away get away and I'm like swatting them like flies and cutting them off and it just gets really stressful because all these people when you're just nice to everybody everybody thinks they can get something from you people vampires especially like people who are vampiric and who Tan, tend to want to take advantage of others people who see people as other people as resources not as people they're always on the hunt for somebody who seems overly friendly and presumptuous and so it's really important that you develop a type of poker face where when you first meet a person you know you're not super friendly but you're not necessarily rude you're just kind of like neutral and that way if not to say that that's gonna like deter any toxic person completely but i'm saying it can help help and it people won't read you as this naive overly nice person who's gonna um you know who's gonna allow to themselves to be taken advantage of and if you're a very friendly person like me this is not me saying you need to kill your personality do not ever do that you shine bright you do what you have to do you be yourself but i'm um, save your energy and your happiness and your um friendliness for people who've earned it and for yourself especially save that for people who've earned it who've worked for it who have been kind to you who have shown over and over again that they are here for you um for yourself for people who stand by you for people who support you and listen to you and empower you save your friendliness for those people and think of your your personality and your goodness as a gift or as um, something that's very precious and that can only be given and seen by people who have earned it and it's solely for you because you are precious your essence your personality everything about you is precious and you deserve love and compassion and you don't deserve people who hurt you in little or big ways and so make sure that when you meet people for the first time you have a sort of poker face where it's like you know if you're meeting somebody for the first time it's like you know hi how are you nice to meet you my name is blah 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 um yeah like you're not too friendly you're not like oh my god hey it's so nice to meet you what's your name oh my god do you want to go for coffee sometime oh my god like not to say that you can't be friendly but i'm just saying be careful because i have been so friendly to so many people and those same people 
screw me over. And the thing is, um, I've been friendly to people and they've been friendly back. And then they turned on me. And then I've been friendly to people and they became close friends. And then I've been friendly to people and they became horrible people or they were always like you do not know who you're meeting when you first meet somebody and so if you let off that you're like this really open and nice person vampires are constantly looking for people to deplete and they go after a wide variety of people but the thing that they're looking for the most is source and when i say vampires i mean wolves and sheep's clothing it's all the same terminology uh, snakes in the grass vampires wolves and sheep's clothing <laughs> we're going the fairy tale route but these are all people who are on the hunt for people who they can take advantage of and for, are looking for ways to take their problems and out on other people and to get their needs met in a manipulative way. And so make sure that you're on the lookout and make sure that you're protecting yourself by kind of having some type of a poker face. It helps if you kind of identify, like maybe if you see a person on in a movie or in a show or a celebrity that you know or a person that you know who ha does a good job of doing that maybe kind of thinking about them and channeling them a little bit and being like hey i know bucky mcbuckerton does a really good poker face maybe i can kind of pretend like i'm him and i know that sounds really weird and goofy but sometimes it does help when we kind of put ourselves be beside ourselves and kind of think about how other people may navigate these situations and then it helps us bring more insight to how we can and so please, for the love of God, get a poker face. And that does not mean you're rude. It does not mean you're mean. It does not mean you're aggressive. It just means you are being neutral and kind of calm and very collected when you're meeting people and you're not being mean, but you're also not being too nice. And you're just kind of not giving off that you are really friendly and you can be taken advantage of. And if you're friendly, do not, your friendliness is not a weakness kindness is not weakness but some people see it as such and they will come after you and people will come after you regardless people will always try and attack you but i think it's really important that you understand that it's your kindness is not a weakness but people do tend to prey on kinder people more and i am gonna be blunt with you if you don't already know that if you are kind you are going to be more of a target than a person who is not as kind but you can totally navigate that like i've navigated it and i've done a pretty good job like i'm a very naturally kind nice person who's actually very sincere and i have had issues with people trying to take advantage of me and i've definitely adapted a poker face and have kind of reserved my energy and before i interact with people closely i always watch them before i even interact with them at all and then if i choose to interact with them i have a poker face and then if they show themselves as a nice person i make sure i i'm i don't befriend them for a few months and then if they seem nice i will befriend them and if they're not nice if they seem sincere and i don't see any red flags i will befriend them um and I, that I've been that's led me down a really good path a couple of times I've slipped up and I've some people have made it past even those screenings but barely maybe like one person I can think of but yeah I know I'm kind of being long-winded but those are a few examples of ways that you can kind of start to avoid these types of people but overall I think the best way to avoid these types of people is honestly just getting to know yourself um one thing that I've noticed just throughout my healing journey is that I thought, and I didn't realize I thought this, but I thought I just had to be mistreated by people. I didn't realize that. And I know that sounds goofy. And I know that that sounds like, wait, it sounds kind of like, hey, like, what do you mean when you say that? Like, it sounds very nebulous, but it's one of those things where when for most of my life, I was mistreated and I was treated very badly. And I thought, you know, good people were just hard to find. And I thought, hey, when I, and then when I encountered somebody who was remotely nice to me, I fell for the trap immediately. But what I realized is like, it is not your fault if somebody mistreats you. But at the end of the day, you do have to sit down and realize that, you know, sometimes it's not that it's us, but I realized that I was attracting a lot of really crappy people because I felt crappily about myself and I didn't even realize it. I just thought it was like, that's just how the world worked. I thought that, oh, I was just supposed to be mistreated. And I didn't realize that, no, like you can be very tactful and like careful about who you put yourself around. It is never your fault if somebody abuses or mistreats you, but there are things that we can do to help protect ourselves. And it's one of those things where it's like, you know, I'm not saying that it's your fault that if you're being mistreated, but I think oftentimes we are not tactful and careful about who we put ourselves around and we accept ill treatment or we are very slow to defend ourselves. And a lot of times 
what I notice is my healing journey is obviously synonymous to self-love and my self-love journey. And when I realized and I looked objectively at a lot of the issues that I had, I realized a lot of them were happening to me was they were happening to me mainly because I lacked self-love and I didn't realize that I did. And I'm not saying like, if you hate yourself, bad things are going to happen to you and that's your fault. That is not what I'm saying. But I realized that, you know, I had gotten so used to being mistreated that I had just assumed that I was lucky to have anybody come my way. And I just accepted whoever walked into my life. And I didn't realize, no, I had the right to be choosy about who I let into my life. I got to be the gatekeeper of who I wanted to have in my life and who I didn't. And I had a right to say no or to say yes or to say, hey, I'm going to give you about three months and I'm going to think about it. And you're lucky if I say yes. Like you have a right to be picky about who you have in your life. And a lot of times before, because I lack self-love, I had an open door policy where I and I didn't even realize I thought this way where I was allowing people to mistreat me. And I'm gonna say allowing because for me, it wasn't even that I was allowing. I just didn't realize I had a choice and I didn't realize that. And I know that sounds weird, but I really didn't. And I also just feared people's anger a lot. And I just didn't realize that, hey, the best way to avoid toxic people is to love yourself. And I know that sounds so like cheesy and so like, like weird and buzzfeedy and just insincere, but I really mean it. Like once I started spending most of my time by myself and I started just slowly ending, some very quickly ending the toxic relationships with these bad people, with these wolves in sheep's clothing, I started noticing that just everything started falling into place. Um, I started becoming more confident in my actions as I started spending more time by myself and getting used to myself and getting to know myself, getting to know what I liked, what I didn't like, getting to know what things bothered me and what things didn't, what type of people bothered me, what type of people didn't, you know, understanding who I was as a person. So therefore, when I went out into the world, I was able to navigate who was most compatible for me and who wasn't. And I was able to pick up on what behaviors irked me and then avoid those people who had those behaviors. I didn't like, I realized that I had worth and it's not that I, I just didn't think I had worth. It was like, I thought I didn't have worth and I didn't realize it. I was very unaware of the fact that I really didn't love myself. And many of you are probably very unaware of the fact that you don't love yourselves. And I was very complacent towards myself. I was like, I didn't think that I hated myself, but I didn't think I loved myself. I thought I was just complacent. But in reality, complacency can be a form of hate. So I really didn't genuinely didn't love myself. And I was allowing people to mistreat me. I wasn't setting boundaries. I wasn't walking away when people were mistreating me or I was over fearing people's anger. And I know that's really scary and standing up for yourself can be scary, but you have to learn to do it or else you are gonna keep encountering these wolves in sheep's clothing. Cause, and the thing is what I've learned is I've gained a lot of these skills of setting boundaries and you know, protecting myself from people. And, and as I've learned these skills, I've had to do them less and less because as I ga- gain my own skill sets, a lot of these people just naturally started weeding themselves out. And it was just very interesting to see that happening. Also, I think in the past I've been a people pleaser and I think a lot of people have struggled with people pleasing and feeling this need to contort yourself to make others comfortable. And a lot of times when we're encountering these snakes in the grass slash wolf in sheep's clothing, we want to make them comfortable. And so when they make out their little passive aggressive jabs at us or they speak over us, we don't say anything because we don't want to, again, fearing people's anger. We don't want to like rock the boat or anything, but it's like, no, rock the boat and rock it hard. And if they get angry, that's a sign that you need to get away from them. And so for me, I just think it's super important that we protect ourselves. And I think that is the biggest tip for avoiding toxic people and manipulative people and wolves in sheep's clothing. And I just think it's really important that at the core, I think um, one thing that I've heard is that the experiences that we have right now are a manifestation of what we look like on the inside. And it's not to say that if you're with a horrible person, that means you're a horrible person. It means sometimes we attract and not i'm not saying like because we all regardless of whether you love yourself or you you hate yourself you're gonna attract a wide variety of people but it's not about who we attract it's about who we repel and it's about who we choose and it's not about um you know like oh like if i just think positive thoughts I'm going to attract this amazing guy or this amazing gal or this amazing human. Like, no, it's 
you're gonna attract a wide variety of people, but if you are not necessarily attracted to them, then they're not gonna come into your life. Like if you look at them, you're like, hey, I don't like you and you repel them, they won't have any access to you. But if you just let everybody, like I did, if you were an open door policy where anybody could walk up to you and be like, hey, you wanna be friends? And you're just like, yeet. And you just say yes, <laughs> then your life's gonna fall apart. You have to love yourself enough to protect yourself and do not sacrifice who you are. If you're a friendly person like I am, do not, do not sacrifice yourself, but rather protect yourself and save that happiness and that friendliness and that love for people who've earned it. And so this video is again getting very long, so I'm gonna go ahead and cut it off here. But thank you so much for listening to the end and listening to me. Um, I'm gonna continue to make videos. This is um, my second video and so this is, you know, I'm still learning. Um, I'd love to hear from you. So um, leave me a comment, you know, subscribe if you can. Um, but yeah, I hope to see you back here on this channel and I'm really excited for the future and I'm happy to help people give advice and kind of share my experiences. And I'd appreciate it if people shared their experiences in the comment. I always love learning from other people. Let me know what you think. Just do whatever you want. Okay, so I'm gonna sign off here and see you next time. Bye